Butler alerted American authorities to his behavior. So how did the suspect in the failed Christmas Day bomb plot make it onto a flight to the United States? Where our CNN foreign affairs correspondent Jill Darty, she's been looking into that. Jill, I understand you have new information. Yeah, uh, just a few minutes ago, um, I did, Suzanne, talk to a senior U.S. official, and he says that actually that father, they can conf he can confirm, met at the embassy once that he is aware of and that there were several follow-up phone calls. So there was uh, more contact than we actually knew. And the other part about this, you know, uh, a few minutes ago, uh, President Obama was slamming U.S. security agencies for not sharing information, not connecting the dots that would have put the suspect on a no-fly list. Some of that information came from the suspect's own father. And today, a senior U.S. official familiar with the father's warning admits that there is a system for reporting that data but not a system for taking action on that information. With images still fresh of what could have been a devastating terror attack, the State Department is analyzing how warnings from the suspect's father that his son might be under the influence of religious extremists fell through the cracks. Spokesman Ian of, uh, Kelly insisting department staff did what they were supposed to do send a cable from the embassy in Nigeria outlining those warnings to the National Counterterrorism Center in Washington, the brain trust of all federal agencies fighting terrorism. Could the State Department on its own have pulled the suspect's visa, which allowed him to visit the U.S. anytime? No, Kelly says, it's an interagency decision. But the bureaucratic finger-pointing has begun. A U.S. government official familiar with how the embassy cable was handled in Washington telling CNN it was a very thin report with nothing specific, just one of hundreds of reports the Counterterrorism Center evaluates daily. Not enough to warrant putting the suspect on a no-fly list or revoking his visa. But in May, British authorities did refuse the suspect a visa and put him on a watch list. A British source tells CNN it was because he lied on a student visa application, claiming he went to a bogus college. That information, however, was never passed on to U.S. authorities, he says, because it wasn't linked to terrorism. I think we've got to ask, why wouldn't our allies have shared with us information, even if it was not terrorism related, if this individual lied on their visa application, in their visa application process, why wouldn't they have shared that with us? Um, and because frankly, if an individual is known to have lied to another immigration authority around the world, I'd want to know that. And already the State Department is pointing to some possible loopholes that might allow someone to fly even with a revoked visa. Information that a visa has been pulled goes into a database and that's communicated to other U.S. government agencies. But no automatic notification goes into airline databases, Susan. That kind of explains the, 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 the loophole there, the, the gap. And you, you brought up something very important in the beginning, new information. Can you just reiterate uh, what you're learning? Yes, yeah, so we can say that it appears that there was more contact than we knew about between the father and the U.S. Embassy. A senior U.S. official is saying there was one physical meeting where he went into the embassy sure. that we are aware of, but there were several follow-up phone calls. Okay, so suggesting perhaps there was uh, multiple contact. Thank you very much, Jill.